This is a headgum podcast. Gonna get a set of clubs that go all the time with tiny nubs just so my hands aren't always flying off the backswing. Gonna get into a Sailor Moon because that cartoon has got the boom man and babes that make me think the wrong thing. How can I help it if I think you're funny, man? Hold on. I'm trying hard not to smile, though I feel bad. Uh, hey, this episode is brought to you by Me Undies. Were we recording? Yeah, well, I started recording while you were singing. Really? I thought it would be a funny little intro. Are we going to use it? Uh, TBD, but if you if you if you heard it, then I decided to use it. I was pretty good. What? <laughs> Sorry, Me Undies. What up? I'm wearing you right now, baby. Uh, Me Undies is the most comfortable, affordable, stylish underwear on the planet. The way it works was they sent us a few pairs. And we were like, holy shit, we like this so much. We want more and more and more. And now Jake and I don't own non-MeUndies underwear. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's made from Modal, which is like a fabric that's twice as soft as cotton. I don't know how they got the best designers of, of underwear on the planet, but every month they come out with a new really, really great design. They Legit haven't had art, a bad design. Art. Yeah, it's all dope. And if you go to MeUndies.com slash Amir or MeUndies.com slash Jake, they give you 20% off your first pair. And the price is already low, and there's free shipping to the U.S. and Canada, so really you don't have a lot of excuses not to order these uh, undies. Just get one pair, because when you do, they will be your new favorite underwear. Oh, and it's nice to have a new favorite, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and actually, last time, we asked people to send us their receipts, and people did. Yeah. Well, people sent us receipts. People actually got pissed. They sort of misinterpreted the way that we promised that. Yeah, they wanted a shout out last week, and I said, no, 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 this is a shout out next time MeUndies endorses an episode yeah. of our podcast. So now that we're here, thank you so much. Gracias. Namaste and toda. Ivan A, Matt E, Samuel J, Ali G, Brandon Ali G. H, yeah, Ali G, Brandon H, Caroline B, Jacob M. Ben W, Eric E, yes, dude. Yes, dude. Khalil W, Mandy M, Mike F, John T, Lucas I, Evan R, Matt H, Jack F, Matt C, Dom R, and lastly, Donal, Donal, Donal P. Cool. So thanks to everybody that uh, ordered, and thanks to you guys for submitting the receipts. Let Word. us know Shout what you to think. Shout out to Khalil. I think that's the dude that was going to tape our show in New York. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. Man. Solid dude. Uh, so... Try it out yourself. There's still some of you who haven't at least checked them out. Go to MeUndies.com. If you like what you see, use our coupon code, MeUndies.com slash Amir, or MeUndies.com slash Jake. 20% off your first order. Free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. Let's get started in here. Let's get it started right, now. Come on, let's get it started now. Yeah. Oh, things got good. If I were you. the question Would you try to give me advice Would you laugh if I had a problem Or would you seize the cheese tonight Or Would you be my hero Jakey My question If I were you Starts here Enrique in the house Very, very nice uh, That was created for us By uh, Tommy Tommy? Tommy Iglesias? Uh, I don't think Tommy Iglesias, but it was a uh, it was a Enrique Hero theme song cover. Oh, Tommy Doughty, D O U G H T U I. Thanks, word, Tommy word. Doughty, for making that song. Uh, God, what a day! Friday afternoon. You know, there was like a scientific uh, study about the most exciting time of the week. Is it Friday afternoon? I think it was like Friday, like at 7.15 or something p.m. Mm, yeah, because I'm a little tired right now. But I think at 7.15, I'm going to be lit. Yeah, that's like when, when the excitement is at an all-time high. You know that Friday night's come in. Saturday's even on the horizon. So you don't even have to. Yeah. Even Friday if night's like a fails. celebration of Saturday night. Yeah, because Saturday is the real night. Of course, the ultimate night would be Sunday night. Oh, fun day. Sunday. Oh, yeah, Sunday fun me? day. Game over. Because the best thing about Sunday night is the fact 
fact that it's exactly 24 hours away from the greatest night of all. Monday. Monday night. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. And twins. <laughs> I love it. Tuesday night would be, if I had to choose one night of uh-huh. the week, would be my favorite night. Tuesday. You yeah. know why I love Tuesday Going up the on most. a Tuesday. You know why? Why? Because Tuesday just gets me wet. For wet. the ultimate night. Absolutely <laughs> sopping. That's when we kill ourselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about Thursday? That's the worst day. <laughs> Suicide Thursday? <laughs> you can go to hell. Thursday's the new Sunday, and we all know Sunday is the fifth worst day, not including Saturday. Oh, yeah. Saturday's the best, though. Oh, I love it. You know why Saturday's so good? Because <laughs> it's close to Tuesday. Wrong. Uh, this is If I Were You, the only advice podcast on the internet that also tackles the issue, the hard-hitting issue of ranking days. I'm Amir. I'm Jake Uy. What's that? Jake, I was going to say Joshua, and then I uh, sort of got scared. It sounded like you had a French name that Jake-ua. you don't know how to pronounce. Jake Uy. I am Jack Wickwe. Jacques. Like, yeah, like your name is Jacques, but you're an American and can't quite pronounce it correctly. Name? Jacques? Jacques. I'm enjoying a, uh, a pomplamous... LaCroix. Oh, is that a, are you side sponsored by them? Is that why you bring them up so specifically? Uh, no, but I do, I would love more Pomplamoose uh, LaCroix. Okay. That sounds great. You're hoping someone from LaCroix is listening and That'd sends you some? Amazing. How? <laughs> I really just wanted to say Pomplamoose. I see. Is pomp, does Pomplamoose mean grapefruit? Yes. Oh, it does? Yes. That's why they say that. Mm-hmm. So every other flavor, the English word for it, Grapefruit, they have the French name for Pomp-le-mousse. it. Pomplamousse. And then in, in in parentheses underneath it or it something? It says grapefruit. Got it. I also believe I've seen grapefruit LaCroix. So they make two <laughs> versions of it, one called grapefruit, one called Pomplamousse. <laughs> it's like the subtle difference between Jacque and J- Jake. Jacque. Yeah. And Joik. Uh, so how does this show work? Do you have any idea? Yeah, we um we we get emails from people who are in sticky situations or faxes spots. or faxes. Yep, uh, or faxes. We do have fax machine. The number for that is nine five 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 five. And we do our best to advise them out of it as expert. Jew boys. That's right. We are expert Jew boys. That fax number again is 917-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-555-
I'm sort of proud of my achievement. I know that makes me sound like a douche male, but I may as well be honest with you guys. I know we didn't have sex, so it's probably not quite as edgy as it would have been if we'd gone the whole way. However, I do sort of feel there's a moral implication here. Love the show, and really hope a season two of Lonely and Horny is just around the corner. Much love, No Siri Bob. Preach, No Siri. No Siri Bob wants to know if he should be proud or ashamed. Permission to feel honored, <laughs> sir. I don't want. I want to be proud of me. I think I hooked up with a 28 year old dime, and I'm sort of ashamed, but I, I want to feel, feel a happy. swell rising in my heart, and I don't know if I'm allowed to feel it. I need the green light. Can I be to a To let douche? these emotions come over me. Is it a douche to be proud of me? <laughs> proud means happy for someone else. I don't. Th- I don't think it means for someone else. Like I have pride in something. Otherwise, it isn't. Isn't it just happiness? You can be proud of yourself. Proud of yourself for when what? you ran your marathon. Were you proud of yourself? I guess I was just happy in general. For a, for I, you can. There's. It, I don't think pride means that it's not allowed to be for you. To me, when you, I think we were talking about pride in a couple episodes ago, and like what makes pride so interesting and a, a sort of. Um, a genuinely nice emotion is the fact that you're feeling this joy for something that you didn't necessarily do. You feel it for somebody else. He wants to feel pride in him. Yeah, but you can feel pride for yourself. That's that, it's that's not illegal. Would you feel proud for doing this? Yeah. Yeah, I would feel proud. You can I think the, that you could have two emotions. Okay. You could feel proud that you hooked up with somebody that was really really hot. And you could also feel a little, a little skeezed out by yourself that it was <laughs> under, uh, you know, some shady circumstances. This guy is half bragging to us, half saying, "Ooh, I feel like a douchebag." Yeah, but he also liked the fact that she had a fiance. Oh yeah, that got him off. I the- think you could be proud about something like a hookup in Ibiza with, with somebody that like had a fiance. I think that's cool. I think it's not <laughs> cool if he was like proud of continuing this and destroying the marriage and so you're saying because they didn't sleep with he didn't sleep with her it's because not it was that like big one of a deal night. and he can be fully proud i'm i'm gonna give you the green light on feeling fully proud of what you did okay i'm gonna say let's stop short of pride let's reserve pride for something a little bit uh less sticky like uh hooking up with someone that isn't engaged to be married to somebody yeah so you're allowed to feel happy but not proud yeah proud (laughs) let's save proud for like it's like charitable you can't feel like uh, it's not a hundred percent genuine pride because Mm. at the end of the day there's an angry fiance involved i'm i can't walk my i'm not gonna walk my um answer back but i do think you are right (laughs) oh okay so you're, you're going on record as saying what you said you said but uh you're wrong about it yeah i think you probably (laughs) nailed it a little bit better oh that's okay that's nice to hear so this guy so you could feel proud of yourself for that (laughs) i'm proud of you for admitting it and And i'm proud of you and i'm proud of myself for being somebody that someone else is proud of what kind of what kind of sociopath is like can i feel this pride have you ever heard like people described like that he was a proud man yeah like (laughs) of what (laughs) what did he do why was he proud in general i'm proud (laughs) i'm just loud and proud about it about what i don't know i'm just proud hi are you very proud (laughs) i would describe myself as having excessive pride yeah i can't stress how proud i am zealousness of pride for myself (laughs) inside uh, his email I've got pride inside. Would you abide by my pride? <laughs> his email is titled ninety eight percent proud, two percent shame. That sounds. You could go a little, where little heavier on the shave. Shame. Where, where would you put that knob? Uh, eighty. Eighty pride. I don't like to dip below eighty on the pride. And twenty percent, twenty percent shame. I think that's me all the time. By the way, eighty percent proud, twenty percent ashamed. Shamed. Yeah. That's uh, a good good balance for your life. And if they had sex, 50-50? 80-20, baby. Same way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Folks, <laughs> uh, I would say making out with someone who's engaged is 25% proud, 75% shame. Ooh, but she was so hot. Ooh, I didn't think about it that And it was way. also in Ibiza. Yeah, and there are sort of no rules in Ibiza. I think there really aren't. Because I've never been, but I would love to go. It seems like Ibiza is Vegas- 
times six without the casinos or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vegas meets Miami meets Shangri-La meets yeah. La La Land meets <laughs> Raven's Nest <laughs> meets take a pill in Ibiza. I'd like to take a chill pill in Ibiza. Ooh, that's a cool... Yeah, um, a NyQuil. If we, were still, <laughs> if we were still working at College Humor, that's a pitch that would have not been greenlit, but we would have made it. What, what I was took it? NyQuil in Ibiza. Oh, yeah. <laughs> To show Avicii I had a cold. <laughs> it's about a guy who goes to Ibiza to party but gets sick. That Perfect. Would be, that would be really sad to have a cold in Ibiza. Yeah. Just like, it, not, and it doesn't prevent you from going out at the same time like you're sneezing. Yeah, you can't exactly jump. I mean, Like, how do you sneeze? Imagine having a I cold felt, at a club. I, I, that's how I felt like our, when we were on tour. The, the last, remember the last night we were in doing our show in... Uh, this past one in London, I was like on the <laughs> cusp of getting sick, and I all I was obsessed with just staving it off, just it's so just sad. Till the next day, just like a sweaty dance room, everyone's fucking grinding up against each other, and you have to sneeze. Yeah, you just your nose is running. <laughs> You're s- sorry, I shouldn't have this shot. I have a, a sore throat. I really need to get rest, <laughs> Avicii. <laughs> I want you to think I'm cool, Avicii, uh, so you can feel some level of pride, some level of shame. Jake says 80 20. I say 25 75. Let us know. Fax us at 917 5 Here's another question. If that one, first one was from No Siri Bob. This one's from No Way Jose. I like that. Did you already have that planned? I had it planned and I got the next one now. No Siri Bob wrote. Yes, no way, Jose states. Hey, you coy herbs. I'm flying back to my hometown for my cousin's bat mitzvah. I just found out that this girl I knew from back when I lived there will be at the party. I'm leaving the day after the party. How do I hook up slash make out with her at the party? Did we just go outside the building? How do I convince her to do so? Please help me without pre- <laughs> without me pressing the issue, you guys. Um... Love. You're not going to hook up with anybody at this party. <laughs> you don't think he can hook up? I apologize. You think no way, Jose? I think no way, Jose, is going to get a no way. I mean, you asked first, do you just go outside? And then you asked, how do I convince her? Yeah. Uh, I think number one is getting her to want to hook up with you. Number <laughs> two is finding the place. It's uh, is, uh, Don't make the plan before the before the other person agrees to the plan. I never hooked up at a bar bat mitzvah i must have been to let's say four a week for two years wow mm. i 400 a couple first at the bar mitzvahs first kiss my bar mitzvah really That's your bar mitzvah up. is the first kiss and i became a man first kiss my bar mitzvah was it a makeout was it a french it was a full it was a makeout it was a french kiss a french during makeout. where during what part of the bar mitzvah it was right after my half tour <laughs> oh my god <laughs> the, the rabbi leaned down <laughs> he used the fucking yod <laughs> <laughs> he stroked your hair with the fucking yod? Cinnamon tub and mazel tub and mazel tub and cinnamon tub cinnamon tub and mazel tub. <laughs> cinnamon toast and mazel toast. It's just the room spinning around me getting dipped by a 48-year-old rabbi. <laughs> Cantor fucking shooting the whole thing for world star hip-hop. A single tear in my father's eye. <laughs> this is insane. Many more in my own. <laughs> Uh, it was who? Where was it? It was it was in the ballroom. After, nice. uh, we had a what was your bar mitzvah? Was it ceremony during the day, party at night? It was yeah, ceremony in the morning, and then a lunch for the adults. Oh, uh, you gotta and have like, the lunch and the cold at, cuts. Yeah, there was cold cuts, bagels, chicken fingers for the kids, schmear. Uh, I don't know if it was that Jewish. It, yeah. I think it was like it catered from like a country club. Classic. Yeah, it was pretty white. Yeah, egg salad, finger sandwiches. I don't think so. I think it was you nailed it with cold cuts, and now you're over. Fruit punch bowl, lemonade. What are we talking not. about for drinks? There was beer, omelet bar. No, no omelet bar. Okay. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> this is so early in the story. It's the story of my first kiss. Laying up on a, a, a fucking omelet bar and a fruit punch bowl. <laughs> it was lunch. There was a spread. Can I move on, <laughs> sir? You're crying again. <laughs> uh, so then there was a night party afterwards for the kids. Oh, yeah. That's what Fruit sucked. punch there, lemonade, pink, uh, white, Christ. yellow. I still remember the outfit that I wore. Khaki shorts, black <laughs> Adidas shirt. Khaki shorts during your bar mitzvah party at night? It might have been khaki pants, but I'm pretty sure. Sh- I know it was khakis. 
and it was a black Adidas shirt with the three stripes down either shoulder. You, it sounds like you're going to soccer practice. Khaki was, shorts and an Adidas shirt? It was very chill. <laughs> what kind of this I know this is a bar mitzvah after all, but let's let's show some class. It was yeah, not a formal not a formal affair. It didn't was sound a like it. Cool outfit. Cool was it was it daytime out or nighttime? Nighttime started at started at seven, went till ten. And maybe this was started, a late summer party. Maybe it, started, it was like nine to. It wasn't until midnight. Anyway, uh, do you remember down, the date? What's that? The date of your bar mitzvah? Oh, uh, I think it was uh, June twelfth. Oh, early ninety eight. Interesting. I, I think that was it. Why so early in relation to your birthday? Um, I think because I was the oldest kid in my Hebrew school, so my bar mitzvah like technically would have been the next summer or something. Oh, uh, and they didn't want to wait. Yeah, maybe that was it. Sure. Uh, whatever. Anyway, uh, went downstairs with my date, uh, and she. You had a date to your bar mitzvah. Well, it was like my date, but it was like the girl that I. It was like you a just girl... asked someone out like a prom to your own bar mitzvah. Well, party? I had met her at another bar mitzvah. Whoa! And. We you had, like, invited her to your bar mitzvah and she didn't even go to your school? She lived in Rhode Island. She was like my friend's cousin. What the fuck? How did she get an invite? She Well, she was my friend's cousin, so she was at his bar mitzvah. And we like liked each other at that thing. And she gave me her number. And then we would talk. Number at age 13? Yeah, then we would like talk on the phone. Like her home phone number. Yeah. She, then we talked on the phone every single night for like a month or two. Which leading, is like long distance back then. Yeah. You had to call so long distance. Leading to my bar mitzvah. Wow. And then she came to my bar mitzvah and it was just like understood that we were going to kiss. And the crazy thing is I had like a bunch of my friends had like given me bar mitzvah presents and all of them had like cash in the envelopes. Uh -huh. So I was like, I had some cash on me. <laughs> Where she, the like, fuck is this going? <laughs> but she took Tread it. lightly. <laughs> You're talking about she, a 13 year old debutante. She well, she was older than me. She was she was she was 28. Uh, so she she took ten dollars and she put it in her bra. Holy shit! And she told me that I had to go get it. Oh my god! But I was too afraid. Oh, <laughs> and I never did. <laughs> you keep the cash. I am scared and sweaty. Uh, yeah, but we kissed. We made out twice. That's amazing. Yeah. She just took the ten bucks. Uh, yeah, she kept it as a as a a kissing fee. I guess so. Have you ever seen that lady again? Um, I saw her again that summer, um, but never never since then. Uh oh, those summer nights. I wonder if she's on Facebook. Oh, yeah. I wonder if she's married right now. I wonder if she's a 28-year-old nurse. Oh, she's dead. Mm. Awesome. She, oh, she's dead the next day. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I can get that tenor back, that Hamilton from her parents. With interest. That's uh, So, oh, wait, that's all to say that I hooked up during a bar mitzvah. Have you? Uh, no, because when I was 13, I didn't kiss anybody. And then, like, since then, I've only been to, like, three or four bar mitzvahs. And I guess I never I never met somebody there. Weddings are the new bar mitzvahs. I don't know if I've ever hooked up with somebody at a wedding. Really? <sighs> Enough about me. Uh, how do I convince her to do so? Uh, I guess you cannot convince someone to do so. Yeah. Well, and if you write an email saying, how can I convince her to do so, we don't like your natural chances. Mm -hmm. uh, please help me. All you can do is be cool around somebody. Yeah, do you press? How, what's your game? Do you like you make it overt? Do you act cool? Do you act too cool? And sometimes that gets away from you. I don't think you ever want to act too cool. But at oh. the same time, you don't want to act too forward. Oh, no, you don't want to be forward at all. So what do you do? You sort of, I, I like to hover and see if I, if I stay in their orbit, if I attract them a little bit. Yeah, I think that's, well, that's my key anyway. Trying really hard in their presence, but not directly at them. Oh, I see. So in a perfect world, you're making someone else laugh near them. Or making a group of people, including them, laugh. Basically, I like to create an atmosphere in which I seem like a really fun, popular, great person to be around who's entertaining like a small group of people. You're juggling. You're doing a magic trick. You so got like, a yo-yo going. Basically, you become famous at that party. Like, oh, wow, this is the most magnetic guy here. Right? Yeah, you want to be a man charming. about town. And then you zero in. And once they, once someone like values your time, yeah. once somebody is like, I am caught up in what this person is doing and yeah. I have nothing to do with it, yeah. then all of a sudden that's zeroed in, focused right on you. Yeah. It's, a, it's an exciting thing because you're like, oh, wow, now I'm talking to the person who I watched from afar. Oh, that's And good. he's showing a, 
a genuine earnest interest in, in me. me. And now he's pulling me into his orbit and we're going to take over this party together. That means I'm as cool as I think he is. Right. And now he's elevated me and I and I have somehow <laughs> actually elevated him. I didn't know I had it in me. And then all of a sudden you're swirling around the dance floor and you're having a great gay old time. Oh, and you're having you, a gay time. Yeah. And then you're sipping drinks and then all the fruit sudden punch, pink corner. lemonade. What are we talking Jesus about? Club Christ. soda. <laughs> Seltzer. And, is there an egg salad bar? <laughs> yes, there is. You lean in to kiss her. As soon as you get close to her mouth, you sort of take a little U-turn to her ear and, and whisper, is there an egg salad bar? I, <laughs> I think if you're worried about where to go to hook up, then you're not really ready to hook up. Yeah, you got to act cool. Yeah, once the, once the hooking up is inevitable, you'll, ma- you'll find a way to make it happen. But try not to plan so far ahead because you are definitely letting yourself up to be let down. Zero expectations. That's the key. Act like you are never going to hook up, but it's not that important to you. And then usually it'll be a little easier to make happen. I like that. Uh, Next question. But before we get into the next question, I just wanted to say that we have another sponsor for this episode. Oh, pray pray, pray tell. Yeah, I just, just, while we're talking, I just wanted to let you know that Blue Apron also sponsored this episode. Very nice. Blue Apron, of course, you know, being the, the company that makes it easy and affordable to cook your own meals at home. I'm familiar. I I don't think you cooked me a fajita from there one time, brother. That, that's right. Uh, cooking together, I don't know if you know this, but it builds strong family bonds and also bonds between interpersonal relationships, perhaps a roommate or a lover. Bond. Do we have a strong bond? Do I we have a, lover, a lover's bond? We didn't Not until we, we cooked lovers, together. But do you feel like we have a lover's bond? Yeah, we definitely have a, a bond that's stronger than coworkers and friends, that's for sure. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, really uh, cool to hear you say that, brother. Uh, and those who spend a lot of money eating out and going to high-end grocery chains can now cook food and spend under ten dollars a person for a delicious meal i'm talking about paprika spiced shrimp and cheddar grits with tomato and sweet corn i'm talking about stuff like summer udon noodle salad with cherry tomatoes corn summer sweet pepper stuff that you didn't even know you could make they send you the perfect amount of ingredients to make it fresh high quality ingredients make a real difference and it's important to know where your food comes from and for less than ten dollars per meal blue apron delivers these Seasonal recipes, along with pre-portioned ingredients to make these delicious home-cooked meals, right to your door. So for twice or thrice a week, you're cooking your own food. And you're not only cooking that food, but you're learning how to cook other food. Uh, They stress variety. New recipes created weekly. They're flexible. Customized recipe based on your dietary preferences. So if you're a vegetarian or if you're gluten-free, there's something for you. And it's easy. It is so easy. Each meal comes with step-by-step, easy-to-follow recipe card and pre-portioned ingredients. So even dummies like me and Jake can do it. I'm smart, dude. And you and you were able to make it. I did see the microwave sort of steaming up at one point. Mm-hmm. Filled which is, it with soda. Yeah, it wasn't, was not part of the meal. Uh-uh. Uh, and you can check out this week's menu and get your first three meals, three meals with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash if I were you. You're going to love how good it feels and tastes. That's blueapron.com slash if I were you. What was I saying about the question that we had to answer? Um, well, real quick, I found my uh, first kiss on Facebook. <gasps> Who? Uh, well, I don't want to say her name because she doesn't feel like being fucking famous. Oh, dude. Anyway. Don't, let's not make her famous. Wait, you found her? Yeah. The Rhode Island girl? Uh, yeah. She still lives in Rhode Island. She has a child. What does she look like? Oh, she's with child? She was with child, and I guess now she's with the child sometimes, but he seems old enough to be in school. So. Really? Can I see? Oh, she's still very pretty. She is pretty. Uh, Where's her kid? There's a... Uh... Oh, yeah, here, here he is. <laughs> that, could have been, that could have been your little boy. Yeah. If you would have uh, not let her go after that fateful summer, that could have been your son. That would have been... Well, he's a Red Sox fan, so you know what? No kid of mine. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. Do you think she remembers you? Uh, yeah, I bet she does. Oh, really? I'd be surprised. I mean... Worth a Facebook friend request? I don't think so. Is that I guess crazy? I probably wasn't her first kiss. Is that nuts? Would that be crazy? No. Uh, all right. We need a guy's name. Oh, wait. I don't think one. so, Joe. Well, no, that was your third one? Yeah. <laughs> that- <laughs> you went from No Siri Bob, No Way Jose... I don't then, think so, Joe. Is that a real one? Is that a real thing people say? Uh, yeah, yeah, it might be. I was so into the second one because it was a thing, and then you're like, I got a third one, and my expectations were so high. Oh, yeah, I mean, I don't think so. There? What about Say It Ain't Joe? Oh, Say It Ain't So Joe? Say, say It Ain't, ain't Joe. Joe So? So Joe? All right. 
Say it ain't so. Joe writes, uh, me and this dime of a girl, our, our listeners have been hanging out with dimes recently. That's <laughs> yeah. pretty awesome to hear. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, me and this dime of a girl have been flirting for the better part of a year now. And for one reason or another, haven't gotten around to sealing the deal. Just last month, she told me she wants to be together, but seeing as we're both off to uni soon, she said it wasn't worth it, only to start messaging me and being flirtatious again. Since then, the conversation has been extremely sparse with us talking for a bit and then her often not replying, only for her to strike up the conversation a few days later. Can you guys give me some insight as to what may be going on with this girl? Should I proceed to seize the abstract cheese? Thanks in advance. Love the show. Uh, Say it in. So, Joe. So... His wait, his girlfriend? No, no, a, a flirtation. Flirtation. Partner. She's sometimes disappears and disinterested, and then sometimes she comes back and starts being flirtatious again. Nice. Silence for a little bit, and then she strikes up the conversation a few days later. He's confused. How can he seize the cheese? What can he make of this abstract nonsense? I can put a name on it, which is benching. Oh, it's that it's a name that you didn't create. He's been benched. Which is an article we read. Yeah. Which is like uh, Ghosting's Ugly Cousin. Yeah. So a, Ghosting is a when you disappear. Redheaded stepchild of Ghosting, which he, I think is e- – this is even more evil. Benching ghosting, is more evil than Ghosting. Yeah, because Ghosting is confusing and annoying, but – There's it, a finality But to you it. do get it. Yeah. <laughs> you get it. Yeah. And this – Is this – is what? This, this is, this is a, a mystery. <laughs> Because she's staying in contact. Yeah. Why? If she's not interested, why is she reaching out every couple because days? Because people are like, oh, it's like... So I what think, is the idea uh, of benching? The, ben- the idea of benching is you're not, you're not eliminating this person as an option. You're, you're keeping, keeping them. Literally, you're keeping them on the bench. They're warm in the bench in case that you need to get called out into the game. I should but, say that we didn't create the word benching. It's a New York Magazine article by Jason Chen. Yes. So if you want to read all about it, do that. But the, the, the premise is Is he the that, person that created benching? That he's, he's the one who named it benching. Got it. So, so yeah, you, you check in. You're like, hey, how was your weekend? Hey, happy 4th of July. And, like, that person still feels like there's a chance, like there's an inkling you're in their life. But anytime you say, let's get a drink this week, it's, no, I'm too busy, not this weekend. But then they'll check in and they'll be like, yeah. you doing anything fun? <laughs> All right, yeah, we'll catch, like... You it's, never see the person. It's you, they, bursts it's, of micro joy mm-hmm. that mean less than actual it only joy. Happen, have you ever been benched or benched someone? Yeah, I think so. And I think it's because, one, you avoid uh, the, like, if you ever run into them and you ghosted them, then it's like, oh, that person is bad. Right. Benching is, on the surface, not bad. It's like, oh, I'm still checking in. We're gradually becoming friends. We'll talk frequently. I'll reach out sometimes. I ain't mad at you. You ain't mad at me. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> but the person being benched is kind of getting fucked with because he's like, wait, why is she reaching out? I'd rather just be like, if you're not interested, don't talk to me at all. Yeah. And if I'm not interested in you, I won't reach out to you at all. I I, I bench people all the time and it sucks i think it's the worst thing you can do but do you bench or do you ghost because i can't imagine someone that you've ghosted you then just text a week later out of the blue saying hey how's it going i think i ghost a a little less than uh one might think i i do feel too guilty to not respond to a text respond is one thing but reaching out uh oh yeah i don't know i don't i won't do the reaching out part but i'll always respond and just like well i guess benching is like the person being um, pursued like actually st- staying more in the game yeah you want to keep them involved so like sometimes oh this person who I thought wasn't interested in me suddenly uh, comments on my Facebook post right. like oh so maybe she is interested in so me? is it that person being like is it them being friendly and not wanting to have the breakup discussion or is it them being needy and being like oh well I don't want to like actually date this person but I do like attention so uh, I am going to keep on reaching out I think on one hand it's you trying to avoid being the bad guy or bad girl so you're still reaching out hey, I'm still friendly to him I'm not being a meanie I'm not a ghoster and then two it's like I got to keep these because much like real benches I got to keep my bench players happy because what if my number one string gets hurt Mm-hmm. I don't want to like walk up to the bench for the first time in three months being like, hey, remember me? I want to be like, hey, I've been, we've been chatting on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and it's all good, right? Now respect, let's hang out. Respect, but to <laughs> me, man, the world is the bench. Like, <laughs> you, this is not a sports metaphor anymore. Okay, right? like, what you is got, You got like 
your number, your one through three, whatever that you're like, you have in the actual rotation. Yeah. And then benching, it's just pointless. Like, if you need to go to the bench, then that means you need to go into the real world. Like, there's... So you'd rather... But it's hard to, like, strike up a conversation after three months of silence. Well, you don't have to talk to anybody you already know. It's like keeping the fish alive. But, like, they... The fish in the ocean live on their own. Oh, you're saying start I'm saying you don't to need strangers. to have the tank. I am saying every once in a while you go out into the middle of the ocean and you go fishing. You want to you want to start picking people up from free agency. The entire world is the your waiver. options. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> you need the waiver while you don't need a bench. Mm-mm. So if you're not interested in girl A, don't bench her. Just cut her off completely. I don't think people like coming in off the bench. I don't think it's an atmosphere of positivity <laughs> and and goodwill. So, I don't think you're in, a, you're in a good position to keep people on the bench. So this person, would you say, is being benched? That's why this girl is chiming in every couple yeah. of days. And you know what, brother? You don't have to sit on the bench. You can walk. You always can. You dive back into that ocean. That's the hard part. You're in a little tank. So that means if someone is displaying this behavior, you obviously like this girl. She's occasionally reaching out. Are you suggesting not replying when she replies? Yeah, it's a tough thing to do. You have to basically ghost your crush. Very, very <laughs> tough. Very tough. You got to have a lot of pride mm-hmm. in yourself. Yeah, dude. Being like, you think you can bench me? Well, I'm gone. I cut. You can't fire me. I quit. That's what's up. Which was technically bad to do in a sports game. Mm-hmm. Like if someone puts you on the bench, you're like, if, you're not, if I'm not starting, I'm leaving. Well, that's what I say. That means a, you have a bad attitude. This is not a sports <laughs> metaphor anymore. This is a fish metaphor. <laughs> It's all fish. Uh, All right. So you are getting, quote unquote, benched. Uh, So simply put, this person is not interested enough in you right now to go for you at all. So don't give her any credence. Pretend like she broke up with you. Yeah, don't. Yeah, you do do not hang around waiting. There's nothing attractive about somebody that's doing that. And then what if in like three months, this person reaches out again and says, "Can can we go out? Then you know what? Then you could totally do it. But there's no reason that you have to like – I don't think that person reaches out to you and says, let's act, let's finally go out if the entire time she was disrespecting you to the point of like ne- you know intentionally never seeing you. Yeah. You just were a spineless dude being like, things are good. I miss you. Ha, ha, ha. Let's get drinks. Oh, no worries. Ha, ha, ha. Well, the worst thing to My do is – It was good. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> the worst thing you could do is wait for her. Like, close your door to other opportunities while you wait. Yeah, don't wait. But you just go be chilling. And if she comes back, then that is great. Like, you don't have to – that's – like I talked about this before. Like, passive persistent and persistent persistent. Right. You'd be passive persistent. You could keep on liking her, but just don't let her know. Yeah. At the very least, do not let her know that you still like her. Uh, next question. First, a next sponsor, I should say. Oh. Because this episode was not only brought to you by those other guys, but also brought to you by Nature Box. Nature Box. One of our original, one of our most dear. We have a special connect- connection with Nature Box. I think we were the first podcast that Nature Box sponsored. Yeah, we were one of their day ones. Uh, a lot of people want to make healthier choices, and that uh, is especially true when it comes to snacks. You don't need to be eating cookies and junk. Uh, so Nature Box said, why don't we deliver tasty snacks made with simple ingredients right to people's doors to give them something better to snack on without feeling guilty? Guilt-free snacking. Pers- uh, personally, I think that's a great idea. They have a 100 delicious snacks to choose from, and we're talking about ranging from healthy to indulgent. I personally love any lentil loop because it's like I'm eating potato chips without actually having to eat potatoes. Yeah, and I like the jalapeno cashews. Mm, you're a nut man. I am a nut man. You're a nutsman. <laughs> they have hundreds of options. So why don't you go to naturebox.com slash if I were you and check them out because right now they're offering you two free snacks when you do so. So if you are interested in getting snacks delivered to you, Without any of the guilt of eating terribly, go to naturebox.com slash if I were you to get two delicious snacks for free. By the way, this offer is quite limited in time. So that's naturebox.com slash if I were you to get two free snacks today. Uh, I should also mention that I also really like the uh, blueberry nom noms. Mm. I, I always forget to mention blueberry nom noms, and I really like blueberry nom noms. So have truth, the blueberry truth. nom noms. Thank you, Nature Box, for sponsoring this episode. Uh, all right, we got a last question um, from. Uh oh, this is bad because it's from a lady in the life. <gasps> no can do, man do. <laughs> <laughs> Not Sue. Oh, yeah. Sue. (laughs) No can do. Sue. 
uh, shit. What about our shows in the Midwest? What about them, dude? There are tickets still available. Dude. Oh, uh, Chicago. Yeah. Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. Detroit. Not in that order. Uh, it's actually going to be Minneapolis, Chicago, then Detroit. Those are Thursday, Friday, Saturday shows. Those are rage shows. Those are party shows. We call those rage shows here. Uh, so if you live in the area, please do come down. Tickets are still available. And you can get them at ifireadshow.com or jakeandamir.com. We do the podcast live. You can be part of it. Uh, yeah, we also drink whiskey together. How's that for fun? Uh, that last show will be uh, painful, but we will... We will make it seem like our first. We're going to yeah. power through. Uh, no, I'm going to be on that whole entire weekend. I'll be dead on Sunday. That's okay. When I die. Detroit. Don't worry. We've actually never even performed in Detroit. We've at never all, performed ever. in Detroit. Nothing ever. And we've. this will be the first live podcast we did in any Midwest cities. Oh, shit, yo. So make it happen. Uh, and Toronto will see you soon as well. Uh, all right. Are you ready for the last question? From No Can Do Sue? No, can do Sue right. Here's my issue. I lost my vibrator, and I have no clue where it is. Uh-oh. I'm 19 years old, and I am living in staff accommodations with two other girls who I just met when I moved here three months ago. Last night, I went out and got a little more than a little drunk. When I got home from the bar, I guess I was feeling a little horny because I got the really strong urge to masturbate. Drunk me remembered that my bunkmate was home sleeping... Because she had to work in the morning. But my other roommate, who has the whole other room right to herself, is at work because she just switched to the overnight shift. I must have thought it would be a great idea to go into my roommate's room to masturbate. But what I didn't know is how stupid my high and drunk ass would be. Fast forward to tonight, and all of a sudden I start to remember what I had done the previous night. And I got this feeling that I should go to check to make sure that my vibrator was back in the drawer where I always keep it. Sure enough, it's not there. No one is home right now, and I have searched the entire place from top to bottom, and I can't find it anywhere. Do you think if I left it in my roommate? Do you think I left it in my roommate's room? Do you think she would have said something if she found it? What do I do? Uh, there's also a guy moving into my roommate's room soon, so I'd really hate it if he found it. Any suggestion on what to do would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, guys. Uh, the podcasts are the only things that get me through work. So toda to no can do Sue. No can do Sue. Have you ever lost a vibrator? Um, in myself. <laughs> oh. Did you check way up there? <laughs> way Ooh. up. I feel vibrating. Uh, I never have I ever. <laughs> I wonder if I've ever like lost porn or something. Lube or whatever. You're a sex aid. Yeah, uh, uh, not that I can think of. So this woman the lost... The I can imagine is like leaving a condom wrapper somewhere. Oh, yeah. That's a, a sex thing. All these things are kind of embarrassing, but also kind of not. Like everybody has this shit. Right. So it's like it's like the the level of embarrassment you feel when you buy condoms, right. which is like this kind of half fake embarrassment like ooh, oops you caught me doing something hot <laughs> which well here's the thing though because it's it's one thing if she like left her vibrator in the bathroom or like she left it in her roommate's bed potentially she so it's doesn't not just wanna... like it's not like sexy and hot it's a little like you know grotesque you, yeah like you, you snuck would... <laughs> into my room and masturbated while i was gone <laughs> right there's that'd that be part. like you that'd be me finding like uh, lube and tissues in my bedroom. <laughs> would you be okay with that or would you be grossed out? Um, I would be, if you masturbated in my room, <laughs> I'd be gross. I mean, I'd be so confused. I would be like, why did you? Oh, because someone was staying at my house. Then I guess I wouldn't mind that much. See, but it... you wouldn't mind that much, which is what I'm saying. She can go and ask her friend being like, I'm such an idiot. I needed a place to ma- uh, masturbate and I think I left my vibrator here. Well, I think you can look when your roommate when she's not there, and if you find it and it looks like undisturbed, like it fell between the crack in the in between the bed and the wall, then great. Yeah, um, but then you know there's definitely the chance that your your roommate just found it. Yeah, but then what if you get caught snooping? You're just digging yourself into a bigger and bigger hole. Right now, the hole's like five feet deep. You can still get out. If you get caught spying for your roommate's things and then they come home and see it or the guy finds it later and it's another level of embarrassment, suddenly you're 10 feet, 12 feet deep. I'm all about minimizing that risk, minimizing the depth of the hole. I think you can, you can wait till she, till the place is empty. There's probably enough opportunity that you can 
sneak in there again. I mean, hell, you already found a way to sneak in there and masturbate to completion once. <laughs> where, where there's no way she left it in the roommate's room and the roommate hasn't found it, right? Like I mean, maybe, like what if she kicked it to the bottom of the bed and the roommate hasn't washed her sheets or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Or she put it away in her drawer, thinking it was her own drawer. Right. You she might left put it in the it roommate. Somewhere. I've definitely I've been drunk and like lost things that I thought that I would like remember where they were. Yeah, the next day, mm-hmm. half browned out, half grayed out, half 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 asleep, half drunk, half awake. Have you ever woken up and be like, did I did that happen or did I dream that? Mm, yeah, often. Yeah, like did I say that or? I think that happened, but like my dreams were so vivid and my reality was so blurry that they became the same level of lucidity. Well, since my memory is really bad when I get drunk. And so I started doing this thing where like I'll sort of have like some version of a mental check in <laughs> if I like feel myself starting to get like it's drunk happening. Enough. Yeah, like I'm I probably won't remember some of this. So I'll just be like, everyone that I've talked to tonight has been happy and no one's mad at me. And then I'll that way I wake turn up it off. Remember, I'm like, oh, good. <laughs> I remember like checking in and, and remembering to remember that no one was mad at me. Yeah, because a lot of the times I wake up and I'm like hungover and I like feel like large swaths of the night are gone. And I'm right. like, fuck. What did I say or do to piss people off? I think I have a good gauge about whether you start. You're in that zone of not remembering. Oh, I think really? I know what you look like when you're drunk and you remember, and I think I know what you look like when you're an unremembering drunk. That makes a lot of sense. What do I look like when I'm not remembering? I think it's like a lot of eyebrow, eyebrows up, eyelids almost closed. <laughs> so like you're sort of forcing yourself to be like, yeah, like that. Like eye, eyebrows up, but eyelids almost shut. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Smiling, slurring, <laughs> laughing a lot. And like, ah, like, sort of like mumbling, stammering, stuttering, slurring. Jesus, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> I wonder if I could, is there like, if I like shouted a number at you when you reach that level of drunk, like, remember 75, remember 75, I made you shout it at me, 75, 75, like, can if I, I pierce remember. through the blackout? That'd be and like place something back what in if, your. What if you pierce through the blackout and then everything else that had happened when I blacked out came through? No! No! Oh! oh my god! 75! 75! It's awful! It's all coming back! It's all coming! Uh, or I could take a video of you. Be like, let's, let's see if you remember this. I'd rather do the 75 <laughs> thing. Because <laughs> video, it's like, oh shit, now I have to be on my best behavior. Maybe yeah, that's like you waiting out of the... Like, yeah, I w- I've seen videos of myself where I look really drunk and I don't like it. <laughs> that's what you're forcing us to see. Yeah, but other people are drunk too. Yeah, that's true. You're never just like hammered at work. Yeah. Although, maybe... Well, I'm pretty high right Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. Good luck. Find that V that V bomb. I say you can ask. Jake says, snoop around a little bit. Snoop one more time. Snoop one more time. Uh, all right. Fun episode, good episode. We're all happy. We're all healthy. We did we did the ads a little bit different. Maybe mm-hmm. people like it. Maybe people don't. Let us know. Let us know. Subreddit, Twitter, Facebook. It's all fair game. Fax it to us one more one last time. I feel like we should just uh, reiterate the fax number just because we sort of glossed over. Nine one seven five 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 five. And we are going to. Minneapolis, Chicago, Detroit. Yeah, and Toronto, I think, like, in 10 days, by the time this comes out, we're almost in Toronto. I mean, shit, that's very, very soon. And tickets are still available, not only for that live show, the podcast, but we're also hosting a stand-up comedy show with very funny comedians at the festival. All the information is on our website, jakenamir.com. You can check it out there. Thanks for listening. If you have your own questions or your own theme song submissions, that email address for everything is show at gmail.com. The opening one was Tommy. It was a cover. Oh, yeah, of Enrique Iglesias. And this closing one is by Kevin. So, Toda, Kevin. Gracias. Toda to you guys for listening, and we'll be back soon. If I were you, would you be me? If you do, you can you. Turn up the volume so you can hear. Fast advice from Jake and Amir From the very start They'll tear your question apart But later on They might solve your problem 
So if I were you, what I would do is listen to these two dudes. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs> <laughs>